So Stacey, I know that you work with men who have premature ejaculation or the opposite problem, um, erectile dysfunction. And like I'd mentioned before, my audience is largely male. And I know that this is an issue that a lot of guys have concern over. So how do you manage those issues? So the first thing that needs to be ruled out is like biological stuff. Um, So if there's any medical condition that's like physically inhibiting like blood flow or, um, you know, sometimes people with prostate issues um, like cancer. So there could be an actual medical condition going on. So I always encourage people to check that first. Um, Then again, with biology, look at the medications that you're taking. A lot of people are on antidepressants and that messes with your ability to experience orgasm, ejaculation. It messes with your erections. Um, Blood pressure medication will mess with erections. So if you take a a look at what medications you're on, chances are there's going to be some sexual side effects with those. So, um, if you're not on any of those and still having some challenges, usually then it's like in your head. So we start there. So after all of the biological stuff is taken care of and addressed, um, then we start to look at, you know, some of the mental and emotional, um, spiritual elements, energetic elements that are going on. Um, Some people are actually really sensitive to like EMF stuff as far as like computers and lights. um, And we are constantly in like this energetic sphere of, you know, all this computer stuff all over the place. And if you are actually sensitive to that, that can mess with your, um, with your erection. It could mess with your sex drive. Um, also like getting your hormones checked is very good too. Um, I know like air fresheners, artificial air fresheners and, um, certain things like soy will produce, um, more estrogen in men, which can also affect their testosterone levels and their erections. Um, so yeah, looking at diet, looking at your environment, you know, Um, maybe go towards like oil, natural oil diffusers rather than like, um, air fresheners or like, um, Febreze spray stuff. Um, so the environment, what you're eating is a big deal too. Um, obviously like if you're eating a bunch of junk that it's not good for your body and your energy levels are not on point because of what you're eating, um, that's going to affect your sexuality too. And so we'll exercise, like I love to lift weights, um, but lifting weights actually helps to increase testosterone as well. So you have to start looking at all of these things. And then, um, the other stuff is looking at, um, what's going on with your mental and emotional state and your attitudes and ideas and beliefs around sexuality. Um, one thing that I found is that a lot of times men are fed this message that like your masculinity is defined by the strength of your erection and how much you can ejaculate and how many people you can have sex with and how often you can have sex. And that can actually be really damaging to them because if that's one of the only ways they're allowed to define their worth, then that's not them being able to be a whole person. You know, men are often told like, um, you can't, can't show your feelings. You can't have feelings. You have to be a man and, you know, be stoic and go in there and get the job done and organize and direct things. And it's like they're compartmentalized to work, you know, and then women are inundated with this, you know, Ooh, raise kids, be touchy feely, cry about everything. You know, sex is only for men. Good girls don't do this, you know? So like we're getting fed these opposite messages. And, um, so no wonder there's a disconnect, you know, um, and also within the men, I think that sexuality is one of the only ways that they are really like allowed to experience intimacy and emotion and touch and connection. Um, and so of course they gravitate towards sex 
sex. That's the only way I can be accepted. That's such an interesting point that like, you know, men are given this idea that they can't express themselves um, emotionally, like you said. And so that's kind of like their one release is through sex. That's a really yeah, good you point. get work, sex, and sports. And then if you're a dad, but that doesn't include that's the pat on the back, you know, like if you know, to all the men listening, like did your father hug you and kiss you? It was usually your mom that did that. You know, you don't and depending on your age, because I have interviewed hundreds of men and worked with hundreds of men, and generationally there's a difference in their ideas of what it means to be a man. So I noticed that men um, in their 20s or even early 30s at this point, um, they have a little bit more flexibleness with um, as far as emotion goes. And like they saw stay at home dads. If you look at the people um, like TV shows, for example, I love Modern Family. It was a great example of this generational view of masculinity, right? The, The grandfather is the suck it up good old boy, be a man, you don't have feelings. And so people usually about over 45 got those really hardcore, dark masculine messages about being a man. And then you see um, in that family, the dad, who's a little more goofy and silly and, you know, tries to like be, you know, like, um, you know, old school, but he's like really open hearted and loves and like laughs and cries, you know, and then like the kids are just all like kind of fluid and doing their hair and like, you know, so it's interesting. Like, I love that show because it shows you like those generational views of what it means to be a man. And so I see that like within our culture and society. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.